If you've been a fan of the NFL for some time, you'll no doubt have seen, at least once or twice, Gillette Stadium chanting for Tom Brady. Well, last season Tom Brady came into Levi's with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but it was a young rookie making his first NFL start who lit up the scoreboard that day. Brock Purdy had a great game, throwing for two touchdowns and running for a third, and becoming the only quarterback in NFL history to beat Tom Brady in his first NFL start. And by the end of that game, Levi Stadium was chanting for Brock Purdy. Well, almost one year later to the day, Brock Purdy would again face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Levi Stadium. And if you can believe it, he would improve on his performance. In fact, he had a perfect 158.3 passer rating. Welcome to Josh's Football Breakdowns, where we don't tell you what you're seeing, we let the film tell us what we're seeing. Now one question young quarterbacks routinely face is can they go against a defensive head coach for a second time? And here Todd Bowles comes up with a creative defense early in the game. Tampa Bay will only rush these three players and ask Shaq Barrett to drop back. But to make up for it, they send the linebacker instead. Naturally, this will create a hole in the middle of the field. So this defender will rotate over. And this has the effect of taking away this route of George Kittle. But Kyle Shanahan seemed prepared for this. And the play design simply calls for Kittle to run a deeper route. Now he will come open, but it is still a very difficult throw and one not every quarterback will attempt. But 49er fans have come to expect high level play from the quarterback position. Let's move ahead to later in the first quarter. And here the 49ers have a tight end, a fullback, and a running back in the formation. This could be a run play. So Tampa Bay brings a lot of defenders up to the line of scrimmage, leaving just one safety back deep. And when the running back goes out on a pass route, the linebacker makes sure to drop down and pick him up because that's not a running back, that's Debo Samuel. Brandon Ayuk takes the space the defense left behind. Remember, that safety isn't really there. Wanting to punch this thing in early, Kyle Shanahan uses his imagination and conjures up an extremely creative play call. All three of these receivers go to their left, taking the defense with them. And Christian McCaffrey dives into the line, almost as if he's gonna pass protect, but then he keeps going across on a pass route. Remarkably, Devin White recognizes the play, but he's gotta try to run through all this traffic. He'll never be able to do that. And that's part of the design of the play. Touchdown 49ers. Brilliantly designed play, perfect timing with the play call, and perfect execution by the players, giving the 49ers the lead 7 to nothing. But Tampa Bay decides they can get creative on offense as well. And here they fake the run to the left, but roll Baker Mayfield out to the right. But Baker doesn't like what he sees. And with Eric Armstead bearing down on him, he decides to scramble. But watch Nick Bosa come in for the sack. And then Fred Warner delivers the hit. And it's a fumble and there's a scramble for the football and the 49ers would recover. Cleland Furl would recover this fumble.
So now the 49ers have the ball and the lead in the second quarter. Kyle Shanahan calls what looks like another running play, and the defense reacts, creating another hole in the middle of the field. And check out Brandon Ayuk. He doesn't run in a straight line. Instead, he runs at an angle, forcing the defender to widen and creating separation. And one thing we've seen Brock Purdy do time and time again is throw with excellent anticipation. But he hasn't thrown it here. Why? Well, there's still a safety in the middle of the field. So the 49ers have also sent the very dangerous George Kittle out on a pass route as well. He must be accounted for. Brock Purdy waits for the safety to take away the route of George Kittle and then throws to Brandon Ayuk. And from this angle, we get a great look at the defense reacting to the run fake. And Brock Purdy makes a point to look at the route of George Kittle first, moving the safety with his eyes and only then snapping back to Ayuk. And it's worth pointing out that every one of these throws have been right on the money. The 49ers would add on a field goal, going up 10 to nothing. But you can see Tampa Bay has gone on a long drive, taking time off the clock and moving all the way down to the one yard line. At the snap, Baker Mayfield doesn't turn around to fake the handoff to the running back. He stands straight up to pass and to Sean Gibson, correctly diagnoses that this is indeed a pass and he rotates over to take away this route of Mike Evans. But just like Brock Purdy, Baker Mayfield waits for Mike Evans to uncover and only then throws the pass. Touchdown Bucks, making the score 49ers 10, Tampa Bay 7. But you can see there's still a minute 43 left. The 49ers would like to get some points before the end of the half. So obviously this is a passing situation for the 49ers. Brandon Ayuk runs a route to the inside. But notice the defender has great leverage on him. He is all over this. But his back is also turned, and I've diagrammed it like this for a reason. Brandon Ayuk does a great job of fighting for this leverage and undercutting this, just like we saw in week two in the Rams game. But what really makes this play work is the route of Debo Samuel. It looks like he's going deep and Brock Purdy is staring directly at this route, again moving the safety with his eyes away from the route of Brandon Ayuk. And then there's nobody left to get a tackle on Brandon Ayuk and he makes moves in the open field and takes this for 37 yards on the play. Wow. And this pocket is a little bit dirty, but Brock still makes an accurate pass. The 49ers would add another field goal, going up 13-7. to All right, let's move ahead to the third quarter. Here you can see the 49ers are backed up against their own goal line. And since the 49ers are playing the Seattle Seahawks this week, I thought we should go back to 2018 when they were faced with a similar situation to see their approach. Now one play we've looked at on this channel over and over and over again is a fake run to one side and then the 49ers would sneak a receiver out to the other side, in this case George Kittle. Well here on the goal line they add in a little wrinkle. They don't send Kittle downfield, instead they pull him behind the line as if he's going to block and then have him just continue out on a pass route. Mullins finds Kittle, and the play is a big success, and the 49ers would go on to beat Seattle in this game. So what do you think the 49ers are going to do here, backed up against the Bucks? Well, if you guessed that they were going to fake the run to one side and then pull George Kittle around behind the line on a pass route, you guessed correct. And just like in the Seattle game, the play is a big success. Incidentally, that was one of the first games we ever looked at on this channel, so if you remember that, you were a long-term viewer.
And on the very next play, Brock Purdy and Brandon Ayuk connect for what was undoubtedly the most spectacular play of the game. Okay, once again we can see the Bucks have a lot of defenders up at the line of scrimmage. But this isn't to meet any run threat. In fact, the 49ers have an empty backfield. No, their intention here is to blitz. Now, this is a little bit risky because you're essentially trading one of your safeties for an extra pass rusher. The Bucks only have one safety back deep. And check out the corner, Jamal Dean. He's lined up in press coverage against Brandon Ayuk. This is also risky because, as we've talked about on this channel before, if you're lined up in the press, there's a chance you could get beaten off the line. The Bucks have left themselves very vulnerable here to this route by Brandon Ayuk. But can Brock Purdy get the ball out that far? Not only can Brock throw it that far, he throws it perfectly. And the defense simply had no chance on this play. It was wildly risky. Let's go back to the snap. What do you need to throw the ball deep? Time. And just look at the location of that throw, 45 yards down the field. Now this play happened, of course, because there was no safety help to that side of the field. And once again, we see Brock Purdy holding the safety with his eyes. Brock Purdy can make all the throws. There's no throw he can't make. And the 49ers go up 20 to seven and they would get the ball back. The 49ers pour it on. Debo Samuel goes across the field and the Bucks are in his own. So McCollum does not go with him. He'll have to be picked up by one of these other defenders. But the 49ers run them off with Ronnie Bell. But what I really like about this play is check out Shaq Barrett. He's bearing down on Brock Purdy. Purdy does have the hot read to George Kittle, but Brock stays calm, keeps his eyes downfield, and then steps up in the pocket, and that mesmerizes Devin White, allowing Debo Samuel to come wide open behind him. And this time it's a 40-yard gain, and Brock Purdy is shredding the Bucks. How do you have a perfect game as a quarterback? It's rare, but Brock Purdy has the arm talent. He has the vision to see the entire field, and he has the elusiveness with his legs. And just look at that throw on the run. He is the franchise quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. He is the total package, and he is putting up numbers that have garnered other players MVP consideration in the past. And look at him just keep his eyes downfield here. All right, with the ball on the three yard line, the 49ers look to go up two scores late in the ball game. And this is just a bust in coverage by the Bucks. Two players go with Christian McCaffrey and nobody goes with George Kittle and you can't make a mistake like that against Brock Purdy. Let's move ahead to the fourth quarter because unfortunately the 49ers suffered a big loss when Talanoa Hafunga went down for the rest of the season, meaning rookie safety Jair Brown will have to step in. But Jair was a highly touted third round draft pick and the 49ers think that he can play at a high level. So let's take a look at how he did in this game. Now in this first play, he plays pretty aggressively. Normally we show safeties backpedaling, here he steps up and the Bucks exploit this mistake immediately.
and Tampa would end up punching this thing in, scoring a second time in the game and making the score 27-14. And they would get the ball back with about six minutes left in the game. But here we would start to see Jair Brown make some plays. Now, Isaiah Oliver also had to come into the game unexpectedly. And of course, Oliver has experience, but it's very difficult to come into the game cold like that. And you can see he's lined up against Mike Evans. He has safety help, but that safety is the rookie Jair Brown. Well, Steve Wilkes, I think, made a very crafty decision here. If you have to bring a corner in unexpectedly, one thing you can simply do is send them on a blitz instead of having them play coverage. And that's what Steve Wilkes does. He sends Isaiah Oliver on the blitz. Now, Evans does run a really good route here, and I think the Bucks probably have him if they want him here. But check it out. Baker Mayfield gets hit by Isaiah Oliver right as he goes to throw this pass and the ball flutters up in the air. Now Evans makes a great adjustment to the ball, but watch Brown. He does a great job. His back is turned, but he defends the pass without interfering with Mike Evans. And it's a big fourth down stop for the 49ers. That was a pretty impressive play by the rookie. Tampa would get one more crack at it, but as you can see, now there's only three minutes left. This is true desperation time here. And Mayfield does hit the tight end in the hands in the end zone. And if he secures this ball, he's probably going to survive this hit. But as Moose Johnson did a great job of explaining on the telecast, if you juggle this ball, there's almost no chance you're gonna survive the hit. And check it out, it's Jair Brown who comes over and lays the hit and he dislodges this football, another big stop. And finally, on the very next play, Jair Brown would make the play that would end up sealing this game. And it's a bit of a freak occurrence. Mayfield has Chris Godwin underneath, but the pass is off target. He might've been hit right as he was thrown again. And the ball just takes this weird bounce off of Dre Greenlaw's helmet. And Jair Brown makes an acrobatic interception to seal this game. Wow. Well, I would say that is a pretty good start for the rookie. And you can see the team going over to celebrate with him. All right. And now I want to talk about Brock Purdy's best play of the game. But Josh, wait a second. Didn't you say the play to Brandon Ayuk was the most spectacular play of the game? Well, yeah, it was but I think this is Brock Purdy's best play of the game, and I'll tell you why. You can see it's second down and 11, but the 49ers wanna run this clock out, but they also wanna keep possession of the football to try to keep moving the chains and keep taking more time off the clock and end the game officially. Shanahan decides to wrong foot the Bucks. They go to their bread and butter. They fake the run to one side and try sneaking Brandon Ayuk out to the other side but Tampa Bay is not having it. They are ready for this play. So Brock Purdy simply decides to keep this football himself and take off. He sees a lot of space in front of him. He knows he can gain yards and he knows that it's therefore a running play and he can keep the clock moving. But here at the very end, this is the most impressive part of the play. He makes sure he goes down in bounds to keep the clock running. Very impressive. And at the end, you can see the official come in to wind the clock. And that'll do it for this week on Josh's Football Breakdowns. I wanted to get this video out to you guys quickly because as you well know, the 49ers have a short week this week. They are playing the Seattle Seahawks on Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. And to me, that is a very interesting game. You know, Seattle has two division losses, which are also conference losses and common opponents of the 49ers. Diehard fans will know that those three things I just said are tiebreakers. So if Seattle were to lose this game on Thursday, it would be another division loss, another conference loss, a head-to-head -head loss against a team that's leading the division. And with the future matchups, it would become almost impossible for Seattle to win the division if they lose this game on Thursday, as bizarre as it sounds, this far out from the end of the regular season. If San Francisco wins, they all but clinch the NFC West. 
So this is a must win game for Seattle. This is going to be really interesting. You know Pete Carroll is going to have that team fired up and ready to play. And it's always hard on the road team on a short week. But you know what? The 49ers are going to be ready for this game. You know Kyle Shanahan will have them ready for the moment. I can't wait to see that game. I, the implications are just fascinating. We also have some news on this channel. Last week, I made a big ask for you guys to subscribe to this channel if you like these kinds of videos, and you delivered. Over 250 of you subscribed in one week, putting us over 10,000 subscribers for the first time on this channel. I cannot believe how far this channel has come. It's just been absolutely incredible, and it blows my mind. And I just, I really love what we have created here together. And I could not have done this without my wife, the lovely Mrs. Putnam, or the help of my son, who has been helping me with other parts of these videos. And there's a lot of folks I got to thank for making this channel possible. If you're one of the people that have gone the extra mile to help support this channel, I want to take a minute right now and thank you personally, because you guys have really made it possible for me to take the time to do these videos right. You guys, thank you so much. I am humbled and I am just completely honored and blown away by your generosity. You guys humble me every single week, week after week. I don't know what else to say other than thank you. All right, it's gonna be Niners and Seahawks on Thanksgiving night. What a game that is going to be. It's just going to be an incredible atmosphere. I cannot wait. You really, it's just, this is what football is all about. And I don't know what's going to happen in that game, but you know, we are going to be here to break down that film and I will see you guys then.